Playhouse presents Dick Powell, Charles Boyer, David Niven, Ida Lupino. Tell. Did you get the number? Yeah, I think so. It was a, a Texas license. Carl, that driver deliberately hit this man. He tried to kill him. Stop jabbering, Mabel. And call an ambulance. Yeah. Mr. Jameson, I'm sorry, but you just can't disturb him. Look, lady, I keep telling you, I'm not the police. He's a friend of mine. I work at the same hotel he does. I'm the house detective. Policeman or house detective. The doctor's... Let's me get a description of the guy that hit him. You give them a description. But Sergeant Tolson said they found the car. Surely they must know who the driver was from the license number. Yeah, his name they know. It's Bart Summers, Houston, Texas. Local address, our hotel. The only thing we can turn up on him is an unpaid bill. Unpaid bill or not, you can't see him. Hotel Gregory, one moment, please. Operator? Yes, I'll ring the mailroom, sir. But if there are no messages there, sir? Yes, I'll check again. Sweet 1102? Did you say 1102? Mr. Bart Summers? Why, yes, Mr. Summers, I'll check. Mr. Jameson? Mr. Jameson? What's the matter, doll? Get your finger stuck in a plug? Bart Summers, the man the police are after, just called down. From his room? Just a second. Phone Sergeant Tolson at headquarters. I'm on my way up. All right. Open up, Summers. I know you're in there. Bieber. When'd they let you out of the hospital? And what the devil are you doing in Summer's room? I'm waiting. Waiting? Listen, Buster, you'd better let the police worry about Summers for you. Hey, are you sure you're not supposed to be in the hospital? No, I... I have to wait. But for Summers, you might have a long wait. They found his car down at the airport, and the whole state of Texas can't find a trace of him, past or present. Found a car at the airport, huh? Yeah, Bieber. Who and where is this guy? And how'd you get so mixed up with him that he'd try to kill you? Him? You know, Jamison, I'm not quite sure how I did get mixed up with him. I'm not quite sure. You're not sure? When it all began, I'd been clerking in the hotel for over 14 years. What's that got to do with it? 14 years of being an, an accommodating nobody in a world of somebodies. So? No job's perfect. Oh, I liked the job. It was almost my whole world. But it is funny, isn't it, that a, a man who spends his life handing out fancy rooms and messages never has any himself. No messages. Nothing waiting for me in that room. No family, no friends, no real life outside the hotel, no fun, no romance, just years disappearing. An existence of too little life and too much loneliness. Front boy. Is your relief late again, Bieber? Just a few minutes, Mr. Sullivan. It really doesn't matter. You go ahead home. I'll take over the desk until Fisher gets here. I'd like a few words with him anyway. Oh, thank you, Mr. Sullivan. That's, that's very kind of you. Good night, Mildred. Ah. 
hard, isn't it? When you really want one of those bellboys, they disappear into the woodwork. Is it important? A telegram for Mr. Gregory. Oh, he's entertaining in the cameo room, some very important people. Oh, where are those boys? Uh, perhaps I could deliver it. Oh, fine, Bieber, fine. Good night. Good night. Allow me, sir. This, this way. Uh, easy, does it? Must be that warm up in the cameo room. Well, hi there. I'm Janice White. I believe I know you from someplace, don't I? Now, wait a minute. Don't tell me. Houston. Last summer. You're in the oil business and your name is... is Bart? Janice. Don't you like me and my friends? You keep disappearing on us. Summers. Bart Summers. Dad, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Bart Summers. This is my father, John Murphy. Hello there, Summers. I we met in Texas last summer, Dad. Texas? Well, since you don't look like a cattleman, you must be in oil, right? Martinis always make Dad psychic. Martinis, nothing. A man who makes a living on Wall Street has to be psychic or find himself broke. And I've never found a stock that pays off as well as your Texas oil, Bart. You're in the right business. As a matter of fact, Mr. Murphy, I... Jan. Why don't you take Bart out on the town tonight with the rest of our party? No more on the town for me, Dad. I've got a splitting headache. And besides, Bart just promised to take me home. Bart? What happened to your social butterfly? He had an accident, a terrible accident. An accident? Over there. <laughs> <laughs> Watch her, Bart. She must be the kind of a woman who drives a man to drink. Do you mind waiting, Bart? I have to retrieve my purse. Look, Mr. Murphy. She's changed quite a bit, hasn't she? Has she? I mean, it's difficult for me to form an opinion. It's safe to go now. I've got my mad money. Well, I see that you don't use it. Well, I certainly hope to see you again, Summers. Thank you. Don't be too late, Dad. I won't. Have a good time. I want to apologize for using you, Mr. Summers, but I just couldn't stand any more of my father's business friends tonight. And besides it, it's not my uh, head that's aching, it's my appetite. Well, there's a first-class restaurant right here in the hotel. I can highly recommend it. I have a better idea. Uh, shall we try the place I have in mind? Fanshawe? Cameo room? That is how I met Bart Summers. Why didn't I clear up the mistaken identity right away? Well, why do birds fly south in September? Hello, Pedro! Oh, senora, oh, it has been a long, long time. How are you, and how's the family? Oh, me and Mom and Rosita, we are fine. Pedro, this is Mr. Bart Summers. A pleasure, senor. How do you do? <laughs> this way, please. <laughs> Thank you. Like it? Oh, yes, this is, this is wonderful. Of course, it's different from the hotel. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, it's my pleasure. <laughs> Choose your weapon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pedro called you senora. That means missus, doesn't it? Mm, I can, can save you the next question. He was killed by an act of Congress. The war. Oh, I am sorry. You didn't marry again? No. Oh, what's the matter? Don't you like breadsticks? No, I was just, uh, just thinking. You know, Bart, you've restored my faith in prototypes. You're the first Texan I've ever met who's actually strong and silent. Oh, really? You think I'm uh, strong? Hmm. You must be to carry around that serious expression all the time. I'm going to do something about that right now. There. Thank you. Where are you going? You leaving? Up there. Who knows? Someday we might call this our song. Oh, now, look, I... Oh, what's the matter? Don't you rumble? I never tried. Well, it's high time you learn. Here, would you check this in your pocket for me? Well, look, this can be chaos. I've never... Now, there's nothing to it. It's one part nerve and two parts hip. You've got two hips just like the rest of us. And one and two and one and two. One and two. Practically professional. Oh, Bart, 
I really shouldn't admit how sorry I am you're going back to Texas so soon. No, oh, I'm sorry too, but you know Texas. Some rustler's liable to lasso one of your derricks and let you pelt them once in a while. <laughs> oh, well, thank you, Bart. It's been wonderful. I enjoyed every minute of it. Oh, so have I. It's the nicest evening I... Oh, I guess I'm acting like a schoolboy. I think you're acting very sweet. Good night. I'm so glad we met again. Jan was glad she'd met Bart Summers again. I was glad I'd met them both for the first time. Even if it also had to be the last time. Mr. Bieber. Yes, Mildred. There's some female character on the line who's called three times. She keeps insisting there's a Mr. Summers registered here, but I can't find any record of him. Summers? A Mr. Bart Summers, supposedly from Houston, Texas. Do you know anything about it? Uh, put it through on the desk phone, will you? I'll talk to her. All right. Morning, Bieber. I was about to call you. Yes, I'm sorry I'm late, Mr. Sullivan. I uh, overslept. That's quite all right. At this time. Hello? Bart, this is Jan. Now, surely you checked out. The hotel seemed to have lost you. Oh, I'm sorry, Jan. I, I, I left a message not to be called. Oh, I hate to bother you, but you ran away with my purse last night. Your purse? Oh, well, it must still be in my pocket. I mean, valuable, just sentimental trash, old tickets, and my favorite lipstick. Well, maybe I could, uh, I could drop it by later on, late, late, late this afternoon. Wonderful. I'll reward you with a drink. I might even invite myself to dinner again. There's a place out in Malibu where the seafood isn't even caught yet. Way out in Malibu? Too far? Oh, no, no, Malibu's fine. I'm sure the garage will have my car fixed by then. Six o'clock? Six is fine, yes. I'll be there. Goodbye. Well, Bieber, rather refreshing to have you oversleep. You haven't been late in ten years. Mr. Sullivan, I don't feel very well. Might I have the rest of the day off? Oh, yes, of course. I, I hope it's nothing serious. No, it's just a <coughs> slight cold. Hello, is that, uh, that generous George's used car emporium? Oh, uh, Mr. George, do you have anything with Texas license plates? Well, John, in perfect condition. Only 9,000 miles in this baby. Just enough to break him in. Very nice. I'll have those plates removed. Well, no, these plates. I happen to collect plates. Well, just as you say. I'll take it. The price is 4,000. I said I'll take it. Again. Well, it was in my pocket, along with uh, this. <laughs> I'll press it in my scrapbook. <laughs> Thanks for both. You deserve a double reward. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Dad, you remember Bart Summers, don't you? I, of course I do. Hello, Bart. Hello, Mr. Murphy. Dad's flying to New York tonight, and I promised we'd take him to the airport. Hope you don't mind. Oh, certainly not. Good. Uh, then you collect your reward while I make use of my newly recovered friend. Fine. Would you like to share my reward with me, sir? Thanks. How's the oil business, Bart? Oh, it's pumping away. Oil operations take a lot of money today, don't they? Big money. Yes, money's always a problem. Thank you. Jan tells me that you're heading back to Texas soon on a new deal. I was just wondering whether your bankroll was as healthy as you like it to be. If not, perhaps I could help. But well, that's very generous of you, sir, but I think my bankroll is adequate for the deal I'm working on at the moment. Uh, don't misunderstand me. I'm not trying to cash in on your black gold. I'm simply trying to help you. Are you asking yourself why, aren't you? Well, I'll tell you honestly. Mark, I have a lot of dollars, but only one daughter. She's been very unhappy for several years now, and you know why. But in the last few days, I've seen a very healthy sign. Yes, a very healthy sign. She's been pursuing you. <laughs> Oh, that's very flattering, sir. No, I, 
No, I don't think Jan could really have been pursuing me because she would have caught me by now. I, I've not been <laughs> running very fast. Well, be sure that you don't. Oh, uh, Bart, uh, now why don't you buy yourself some Inco stock in the morning? Inco? Yes, Inco. Oh, Inco. Yes, that's why I'm flying east tonight. Believe me, Bart. Until Jan met you again last night, I had no intention to let anyone else in on it. But I, I don't want to seem unappreciative, sir, but... We'd better hurry, Dal. You miss your plane. I'd rather miss a plane any day than miss my daughter. <laughs> Silly, I'll see you again in three weeks. Oh, but only for a few days. And then you're off on your wild trip around the world. Try and talk her out of it, Bart. Instead of talking me out of it, why don't you come along? Oh, no, I've seen all there is to see in this world. After all, I've been to all the four corners of Texas. <laughs> Spoken like a true Texan. <laughs> remember the Alamo. <laughs> Better than that, Bart. Remember Inco. <laughs> Such a wonderful evening. Wish it didn't have to end. Is something wrong? Yes. Business? No, it's something else. It's something I should have told you about long ago. Oh, look, Bart, I, I'm going to be leaving here in three weeks. Do you really have to tell me? I'm afraid I must. Well, never mind. Don't bother. I know. You no? Know? and repeat the story word for word. It all started as an innocent flirtation. You wouldn't cheat on your wife for anything, but when you met me, at least I give you credit for stopping where most men begin. What are you talking about? Well, you're married, aren't you? That's the something you should have told me. No, I'm not married. Does it matter one way or the other? <laughs> you know something? You with a serious face. You ask the most ridiculous Ridiculous questions. Run, boy. Yes, sir. Take this luggage up to 11.02. Mr. Summers will not be up there. Right. It wasn't difficult to establish Bart Summers in 11.02. I simply brought some luggage from home, put his name in the guest register, and he was moved in. And so the oil man from Texas no longer went home to George Bieber's lonely room. He had a convertible, a hotel suite, and a telephone to receive his calls. And if George Bieber's savings for 15 years had disappeared, he would never have known it from Bart Summers' face. For he wasn't a lonely man as George had been, he was a happy man. Until those last few hours. All right, darling, uh, seven o'clock then, we'll have dinner at the airport. Bye now. Who is it? Your bill, Mr. Summers. There seems to be some question concerning it. Put it under the door. Sorry, sir, but I must see you. I'm taking a shower, but the door's open. Come in. What was it you wanted? About the bill, Mr. Summers. It's a hotel policy they should be paid each week. Your bill seems to have gone considerably over two weeks. I'll send down a check. If you don't mind, I'll wait until you've finished your shower. Your phone's ringing. Well, answer it. Hello? All right, I'll be glad to tell him. Thank you. Mr. Summers, it was your broker. What did you say? It was your broker, Mr. Summers. He said that Inco had jumped another nine points. You were to call him back if you wanted to sell. Little kid jumping. Never mind, I'll call him back. Oh, uh, about the bill, Mr. Summers. A check will be fine any time. I'll explain to the management. Uh, thank you. Thank you, too. Anybody home? Yes, come on in.
And don't apologize, darling. I was late myself. Here, I'll put you to work. All right. Let's see what I can do. Oh. Well, sit still, though. You've got to hurry if you're going to get some dinner before that plane leaves. Well, you certainly seem anxious to be rid of me. Of course. The most convenient way to end the romance. The lady gets on a plane for Paris, saves one the trouble of having to strangle her. Is it really the end of the romance, Bart? Well, temporarily. Unless, of course, the Eiffel Tower turns out to be an oil derrick, then I'll join you at once, I promise. Oh, seriously, we've only got an hour. Well, I haven't even packed yet. You haven't packed yet? Do you really want me to go, Bart? Well, it's not a case of whether I want you to go or not. It's entirely a case of whether you want me to go or not. Because I don't want to leave you, ever. Do you love me, darling? Yes, of course I love you, Janet. It, it's just that... It's just that you don't want to marry me? Marry you? Jen, it's impossible. I, I never even thought of that. Never even thought of it. I must try to explain. It's, it's, it's a different life. I could, I could never give you the things you're used to. But I don't want the things I'm used to. I want you, Bart. You want me? You want me when I tell you that the money I put in that Inco stock is the only money I've got? And the oil in this car of mine right now is the only oil I've ever owned. What do you mean? I mean that I'm a, a room clerk in the Hotel Gregory. You decided to put me in the oil business. A room clerk? My name is George Beaver. I've been a room clerk for 15 years. I've never been near Texas. When I met you outside that cocktail party, you mistook me for somebody else for summers. Why didn't you tell me? Why? I never thought the time would come and I'd have to explain. I never dreamed that you might love me. I kept telling myself that it couldn't last and at the same time praying that somehow it could. Oh, didn't you see what you were doing to me? Didn't you care? How could you be so cruel, Bart? It's hardly fair. Hardly fair. Look who's talking. And the man who thought he'd never have to explain, who thought he'd never have to marry me. I think I apologized for using you the first night we met. Oh, Jen, it didn't happen like that. You've got to understand. I understand, all right. I made a complete fool of myself. I even canceled my reservation for Paris. Well, maybe it isn't too late. Oh, you can't go like this. You have to listen to me. I'll send for the rest of my things later. You've got to listen. Listen to more of your lies. What about us? Am I going to see you again? Of course. We can chat about old times someday when I check in the Hotel Gregory. Now, are you going to have the decency to drive me to the airport? Not until we talk this over. All right, then. I'll borrow your car, just like you borrowed three weeks of my life. <laughs> story. Now you can see how I wasn't quite sure how it happened. Yeah, and I can see why nobody around here seemed to know what summers look like. Hello? Yeah, he's here. All right. All right. Police? No, some dame downstairs in the lobby. All she said was, anyone for breadsticks? It's Jan. And she hasn't gone to Paris. Not unless we're Frenchmen. Hey, wait a minute. You'd better straighten yourself out. She doesn't seem to know she hit you. Thank you, Jamison. Jam! Oh, darling. Hey, you need a shave. I've already had a close one, thanks to you. Leaving you was the stupidest thing I ever did. Now you're back. It's all that matters. The minute I got on that plane, I knew what I was doing was all wrong. It's all my wrong. fault using somebody else's name. After all, I did give it to you. Yes, and it served its purpose, but now I have no further use for it. Have you? Do you have anything better to offer? I don't think Bieber's so bad. I'll buy that. 